What do you think when you look into the night sky? What do you feel? Some see its beauty and stand in awe of its majesty, while others see an ominous, endless ocean of black and feel a deep, primordial terror. For many, however, space is nothing more than peripheral. They see it as just a fact of life. Space is just space. It's a subset within the wider scope of our world that's made up of social media, celebrities, world events, things that soak up our attention and distract us. But for those of us that have looked into the night sky and felt a seismic shift in perspective, it's something more. It's real and ever-present. It's not a subset in our world. We are the subset. When that awareness manifests and you begin to pull the cloth from your eyes and see the sky for what it is, that veil of beauty you see gives way to fear. You begin to understand why space is an absolute nightmare. Picture this. You are floating in the deep vastness of space. You drift calmly, warm and protected in your spacesuit. It's peaceful, if not a little unsettling. You look around to explore what sights the universe has to offer. You see an object so massive that it almost fills your field of view. Your mind scrambles in panic as it tries to rationalize seeing something so impossibly large. Nothing in your daily life, nothing on Earth, not even the Earth itself is this big. Its black, featureless appearance deeply disturbs you. You search for familiarity in the face of such an immense monstrosity. No surface details, no clouds, no light aside from the reflected rays of the nearby star. Its looming, intimidating presence instills in you a sense that you are being observed by something with sentience, and its intentions are sinister. It doesn't care if you get pulled into its gravity well and fall endlessly through its atmosphere to a mortifying demise. It doesn't care because it has no capacity to do so. Pleas for mercy won't save you. No help is coming. No one knows you're here, and if they did, they'd never get to you in time. It isn't malicious or benevolent. This planet, just like the rest of the universe, will continue to exist, completely oblivious to whether you live or die. This, in essence, is cosmic horror. No eldritch gods needed. We perceive just enough information to know that this is not normal, that this should not be. And while the example of observing a massive planet is common enough in science fiction, it's still so foreign that it's something we can only imagine. You can picture it in your mind, but you can't possibly know what it's like to truly experience. You have never been to space. You've never witnessed any object larger than possibly a mountain or maybe the ocean. Very few humans have ever traveled past the atmosphere and turned around to see the Earth itself in all its glory. Those that have reported a near religious experience called the overview effect, a self-transcendent state of absolute awe when exposed to sights that are seemingly beyond human conception. Astronauts experiencing this effect for the first time have been reported to break down and cry, or cloister themselves and remain silent for extended periods of time. Imagine what that must be like to be faced with something that stretches the limits of your mind to the extreme. As of June 2023, only 606 people have ever viewed Earth from orbit, and only 24 have ever visited other celestial objects, with the only other being our moon, at least as of this video. No human has ever bore witness to something larger than the Earth. If seeing our planet from above is enough to transcend human reasoning, imagine what being in the presence of something 1,000 times larger could do. When I was younger, I was deathly afraid of storms. Watching anvil-shaped cumulonimbus clouds approach and seeing their massive, globular structure smother the sky filled me with dread. The concept of a storm cloud was something I couldn't fully understand. Here we have a large object that has defined borders, contains enough precipitation to flood major cities, has incredible amounts of stored energy that discharge in the forms of lightning and wind, yet it can be passed through. I remember a flight I took when I was around 10 years old. I stared out the window across the wing of the plane and observed us heading straight for a large, dark cloud, a thunderhead. I knew it wasn't a solid structure, but I couldn't comprehend how or why. My natural reaction was to brace as we entered the dense white haze, and visibility quickly diminished within the cabin. 
I felt as though I was looking through the window of a submarine into the depths of a vast, grey ocean. I panicked. My parents reassured me that everything was fine, and that nothing other than some slight turbulence was all that would happen. My fingers bit into the armrests as I sat, trembling, terrified of the new environment we had entered. Today, my fear of storms has matured into a healthy respect and fascination. I look forward to the days with rain in my forecast. That crippling fear of my youth returns, however, when I think about gas giants. The sun disappears behind the dark edge of the planet as its shape fills your vision entirely, its terrible shadow engulfing you. You're far too close to escape. Its gravity had taken hold of you hours ago. You can feel its effects now, a subtle sense that you are falling. You start to feel more of your weight as you descend faster into the highest reaches of the stratosphere. Staring deep into the abyss, you see brief flashes of light hundreds of miles below you. Moments of unyielding terror stretch on for hours as you continue to fall. Your throat ripped to shreds as you scream for your life in agonizing horror. The flashes below are brighter, they're more common now and much closer. A sudden gust of wind slams into you as if the planet reached up and swatted you from the sky. Air torrents begin to pull you in all directions as the first crack of thunder tremors through your body. It's shockingly violent, much more powerful than anything you're used to back on Earth. You continue to ragdoll through the cloud deck as the lightning now constantly flashes all around you. You pass through the haze to find yourself surrounded by gigantic, towering clouds. The sky rumbles as the thunder constantly rattles your body like being hit by several trucks on all sides. You feel sharp cracks in your arms, legs, back and neck. Blood fills your mouth as the air torrents pummel your torso like a colossal heavyweight boxer, pulverizing your organs. You let out one last blood-curdled scream just before a discharging bolt of lightning strikes. Gas giants are planets with no breathable air, no hospitable temperatures, no comfortable pressures, and most horrifyingly, no solid surface. On Jupiter, you would experience perpetual storms, violent 900 mile per hour winds, and towering clouds reaching deeper than 600 miles into the planet. Saturn is comparable, having much of the same processes, structure, and composition, as both are rich in hydrogen and helium, the same components that stars have in abundance. Saturn differs in being far less dense and smaller overall, as well as having wind speeds that clock near 1200 miles per hour. Its atmosphere is also more rich in sulfur, which gives its skies a tannish orange color. On either planet, each individual bolt of lightning is hundreds of times more powerful than those seen on Earth. There are no true atmospheric boundaries from the edge of space to the core of the planet, just a gradual change taking place over thousands of miles. Travel deep enough and eventually you would experience strange states of matter under ever-increasing pressure. The layer beneath the cloud decks is a massive, several thousand mile deep layer of gradually transitioning states of metallic hydrogen, ranging from gas to liquid and something in between. Continuing to descend, you would pass through progressively more compressed liquid until your density equaled the environment around you, and you would be trapped there forever in the largest known ocean in the universe. Jupiter and Saturn are both so massive that they effectively delete anything that enters their atmospheres. If the Earth collided with either planet, it would be engulfed, torn apart, and redistributed while their cores would most likely merge. Their cloud bands would show major disturbances for several months if not years, but would eventually return to normal, leaving the universe none the wiser to Earth's disappearance. The ice giants are a different breed of obscenity. Being much smaller than their gas giant brood, they appear like giant ocean worlds within their own sea of black. Uranus and Neptune are the distant twin planets of the solar system. They are nearly the same size, and have very similar internal compositions. Both are suspected of having suffered a collision with an Earth-sized planet in the past. Uranus, in particular, suffered a severe axial tilt as a result, and rotates on its side. Its featureless, hazy, bright, teal hue hides a sinister interior akin to its larger cousins. Neptune is only slightly smaller than Uranus due to it having more mass, causing more gravitational compression. Its wind speeds are the fastest in the solar system at over 1300 miles per hour. That's nearly four times faster than the highest wind speed recorded on Earth. Neptune is famous for its deep blue storm, 
giving it the appearance of a massive, dreadful eye. They form and dissipate once every few years, slowly blinking as the blue giant watches us from deep solar orbit. Contemplating space in general is enough to unnerve even the most hardened individual. Objects exist that represent perverse examples of known commodities of the cosmos. Like brown dwarves, planets halted in their process of becoming a star that resembled giant burning Jupiters. Voids, vast expanses bare of any material and consist mostly of empty space like a contained intergalactic ocean. And rogue planets, solitary worlds alienated by their home systems and doomed to wander the darkness of space alone. But the most disturbing object, the single most ominous and petrifying thing I can think of, not just in space, but in general, is the black hole. It's a concept that defies logic. Something so massive that it contorts the fabric of space and punches a hole in reality. They are the result of a collapsing star crushing itself under its own gravity. The more mass concentrated into a small area, the more gravity it exerts on the immediate space around it. If enough mass is sufficiently compressed, its gravity exponentially increases in a runaway effect until it absorbs everything from large objects, light, even space-time itself, and isolates it from the rest of the universe. Their black spheres, known as the event horizon, is the boundary of the black hole's gravitational influence on space-time. Light can still escape if outside this border, and you could too if you had a ship powerful enough to overcome its escape velocity. But approach too close to the edge, and you will be removed from this plane of existence. Stellar mass black holes, or ones that have the mass of a few suns and measure several miles wide, are so powerful that they will rip you apart before you ever cross the event horizon. Supermassive black holes, ones with billions of times the mass of our sun, may allow you to enter them unscathed. If approached at an angle, you could survive your voyage into the unknown, at least at first. You could be killed by colliding with larger objects falling inwards with you, or you die of dehydration or hunger. If you somehow survived the hundreds or thousands of years of continuous falling, you would meet your end at the infinite singularity where your mass would be added to the destroyed atoms of everything else the black hole swallowed. Or maybe you wouldn't. Concepts like infinity are a mathematical impossibility, and since we can't send a probe inside a black hole, we may never know what happens at the singularity. Maybe it's a portal to another part of the universe through the mouth of a white hole, a proposed time-reversed black hole. Maybe it's a link to another dimension, or the seed of a new, budding universe. Either way, they are without a doubt the worst creation of nature, and they haunt our dreams while they drift through the expanse. They roam the universe seeking fresh prey to devour, and nothing can stop them. They are the unmatchable, unequalable, cosmic apex predator. In the 1970s, the Helio satellites broke all man-made vehicle speed records with an incredible 157,078 miles per hour. At that rate, the satellites could travel the width of the United States in just over 60 seconds, and it could travel the diameter of the Earth in just three minutes. Moving at that speed from the Sun to the heliopause, which is about 11 billion miles, would take just around eight years. If it were to travel the distance of one light year, roughly six trillion miles, it would take 4,360 years. And to cross the entire Milky Way galaxy, it would take over 43 trillion years. That's more than 300,000 times the proposed age of the universe, just to cross an average-sized galaxy. The speed of light, on the other hand, is 670,616,629 miles per hour, or 186,000 282 miles per second. Light is so insanely fast that in less than a second it can travel farther than the distance the Helio satellites could in an hour. This speed is forbidden for anything with mass, because to reach and sustain this speed, the object would require infinite energy. But for fun, let's imagine you slowly increasing your ship's velocity to match the speed of light. 
At some point in your journey, you would begin to see a red, glowing sphere ahead of you as the light from the cosmic microwave background shifts into visible red light. The sphere would morph the faster you traveled, with more light shifting into different visible colors. Soon you would observe a circle shining with the colors of the rainbow with a deep black core at its center. Imagine the intense fear you would feel as you were beheld by the great eye of the universe itself, as if it had become aware that you were attempting to do the impossible. So we know the speed of light is fast, far too fast to be achievable by mankind in the near or far future. But within the confines of the universe, that speed is nothing. It would take at least 100,000 years for a single photon to cross the length of the Milky Way. Even our nearest large galaxy, Andromeda, is a two and a half million year voyage by light speed travel. We have no hope of personally exploring even 1% of our observable universe. The vastness of space keeps us forever confined to our little pocket of the Milky Way. And that's truly the saddest thought for those passionate about exploring the cosmos. Given time, it's possible that we may be able to detect communications from other life forms in our galaxy. But governed by the speed of light, that communication will already be hundreds, thousands, if not millions of years old by the time they reach us. And a return message would take just as long. The inevitable cosmic loneliness is profoundly heartbreaking. There are uncountable worlds, incalculable amounts of beautiful nebula and galaxies that we will never see, and possibly untold numbers of civilizations that we will never meet. The supreme enormity of space is possibly the most terrifying aspect of the universe. The farthest depths of space we can see represent a sphere of awareness, an event horizon that closes off perception of the space beyond due to the limits of light speed. The observable universe is already abundantly large, being quite literally the largest thing we know of, but there's no reason to assume that the universe just stops there. Space continues in all directions beyond our visible bubble into the void, and it may stretch on infinitely. The gas giant you saw earlier was massive, but here we contemplate matters that are truly unknowable, incalculable, insurmountable. Imagine a scenario where we created a super advanced, supremely powerful AI that is able to perfectly simulate the entire observable universe. Suppose we then connected that AI directly into the cerebrum of the most intelligent human that could ever possibly live. You. This AI then forces you to directly conceptualize the entire observable universe. Not abstractly, but in its entirety. From every perspective, every angle, all at the same time. I have no doubt that you would immediately collapse, your mind utterly shattered. If the experience doesn't outright kill you, you would be reduced to a husk of a human being, vomiting and writhing on the floor, your mind having torn itself apart in an attempt to conceive the unconceivable. Throughout this video you've seen footage of space I recorded myself in a game called Space Engine. Well, I struggle to call it a game. It has no levels, no boss, no enemies. I describe it more as a simulation whose objective is to just explore. You can go anywhere and discover worlds both real and supposed in any galaxy anywhere inside the observable universe. The presentation is to scale, meaning that if you launched yourself from the surface of the Earth traveling at the same speeds as the Saturn V rockets of the Apollo missions, it would take you just as long to reach the moon as it did for them. Exploring this mind-numbingly enormous sandbox is a challenge for the cosmically apprehensive. The sheer size and vastness of the game is particularly intimidating upon first boot up, and still is for me to this day. You can search for any named asteroid, planet, star, nebula, or galaxy, select it, choose to automatically travel to it, and instantly zip across the cosmos, traveling at many trillions of times the speed of light. This flares some intense megalophobia, as one instant you could be traveling through the stars, and the next moment, the object you searched for comes rushing into view and grinds to a dead stop right in front of you. The first time I searched for a black hole and selected it, I jumped from my chair as it zoomed into view and stopped what felt like mere inches from my face. I still squint or close my eyes when fast traveling to large, stellar objects like this. It's incredibly stressful, but a lot of fun. One of my favorite pastimes in the game is to go to the star map, adjust the settings to view the entire skybox, and start exploring the galaxies along the edge of the observable universe. 
you can find some pretty interesting things out there, and some particularly massive black holes. Just be sure to adjust your speed when approaching, or you'll fly right into them. I left a link to the game's Steam page in the description. Please go check it out if you're interested. The people over at Cosmographic Software deserve as much praise as they can get for creating such an incredible game. I've spent hours taking breaks from writing scripts to explore their universe, and it offers just the right amount of inspiration and fear I need to keep going. All too often when discussing these topics, we slip into the abstract way of thinking. We conceptualize a black hole or a gas giant, but we don't think of them as objects that can be interacted with. They are lifeless images we see on a screen, like a video game character. Once we shut the game off, they just disappear. But every type of stellar object discussed in this video exists. They are real, and they endure above our heads every moment of every day. Cosmic horror doesn't need great fictional monsters or ancient gods. Our reality has sufficient celestial horrors of its own. The next time you step outside and stare into the night, reach deep into the universe above you and take a hard look. Gaze upon the stars and appreciate the absolute beauty of the cosmos. You may feel something reach back. Thanks for watching.